Okay, so this, um, so the way this actually works is that when the electrons hit the anode, they, um, they, they create an electric current in the anode. Uh, this is because electric current is actually what um, is actually the actual flow of electrons. It's electric, it's current. So voltage is potential and current is um, actual work. So, uh, and current is directly proportional to the amount of electrons flowing. So the more electrons flowing, the higher current. Uh, that's why the higher amplification, the higher current, because the more amplification, the more electrons you will have flowing, okay? And the higher the current, the higher the voltage, because of um, V equals to I times R, and so um, when the current uh, goes up, so does the, uh, and in this case, the resistance will stay constant all the time, so with the constant resistance and the current going up, the voltage will go up, and it'll make my job easier um, later. So, um, that's... Uh, that's what, um, that's actually how the photomultiplier tube um, works. That's how it um, amplifies a signal um, from, turns it into uh, electricity from light, amplifies it using the dynodes, um, and then actually turns it into electric current. Uh, and then I use a um, resistor to turn that current into voltage, which you can sense. So um, that's, so that's the photomultiplier tube, but what actually powers the photomultiplier tube and does the, um, the power supply for it, like I said, is the CW multiplier. So I built this, uh, it's fairly simple, it's, it's, I built it in a computer power supply case. Um, and this, this supply has some, some pluses and some minuses. So what I have is I have a main voltage, uh, mains, mains, since I live in the United States, is around uh, 110 volts. Uh, obviously, it varies, um, but, you know, around 110 volts, I would say, uh, nominally. And I have a 110 to 230 volt transformer, so it'll transform it to European, um, European voltages, so 220 to 240 volts um, is standard. And, and, then what, um, and then what I do is I have it go through a CW multiplier. So normally, when you look uh, on the internet for a CW multiplier, um, they're positive uh, CW multipliers. And this is what I had um, originally. I had a CW multiplier that's positive. Uh, the only problem is then the cathode is at mains earth and the anode is at uh, 930 volts or something. And this is a problem because the voltage actually appears across this resistor. So, um, and this is the resistor from the anode down to uh, ground, if you will. So. In the final design, ground is also mains earth, but in this original design uh, with a, just a positive CW multiplier, ground was not mains earth. Mains earth was where the um, negative one kilovolts is now. Um, and the reason for that is just I built the supply based on the schematics I found online, which were for a positive multiplier. Okay, uh, the problem with this is since the voltage is measured across the resistor, uh, you can't actually use a scope to look at it because scopes are referenced to main er mains earth. And because of that, the voltage across the resistor uh, would have 930 volts overlaid on top of it. Obviously, scopes, this is way too high for most scopes. Obviously, you can get specialty scopes, but I wasn't about to go buy another scope. So, um, basically, what I did is if you reverse the direction of all the diodes, okay, you can look it up online. Uh, here's the schematic uh, right on the screen. But... Reversing the direction of all the diodes, I believe. Uh, there may be other minor changes, but I don't, I don't think so. Again, believe what's on the screen. Um, so reversing all the diodes will actually cause the supply to be reversed. And now, um, so now you will have it supply um, referenced to mains earth will be negative 930 instead of positive 930. Okay? And so the interesting thing with my project is that if you normally uh, here, this is where you would actually take the negative from. Um, but I measured that from mains earth to the positive supply without connecting it to this point right here uh, is also 930 volts. So I decided to use that to mains earth reference it to the supply because I thought that was uh, safer to have it mains earth referenced and also it would be more useful for shielding um, because then I would have some of the mains earth shielding in the rest of the house to shield uh, from extra electromagnetic radiation. 
So now this point is at mains earth, which is also good because now I can connect my scope across the resistor like this. Uh, and technically I wouldn't even need to put the scope ground lead, although uh, you want to do this, you want to clip the scope ground lead anyways, even though it's already connected to mains earth, just because that's a shorter ground path and you'll get less impedance. Um, so, and especially because this is high frequency pulses, you really want, um, uh, actually, sorry, when I said impedance before, I meant inductance. So because this is high frequency pulses, you really don't want um, super high inductance. Um, I, I don't know if it would make a huge difference, um, but uh, I never risked it. Uh, no reason to. So um, so now that's a negative CW multiplier, uh, I only needed about four stages. Um, and if you multiply... Um, so I, I needed about four stages and I had 230 volts. So um, I think it was four stages about. Uh, and um, that got me to about 2,300 volts open circuit. Um, keep in mind, uh, between the output and mains earth, uh, actually, sorry, between the output and regular ground, I have some uh, large clips, or not large clips, large caps. I'm getting a little tongue-tied some large uh, caps to uh, smooth the signal and also to help with the performance under load. Because CW multipliers perform very poorly under load. Okay, because basically the way they work is that the diodes allow the caps to become charged. Um, and then since all the uh, caps are in series, the voltage gets charged in series and each cap is charged to the AC RMS voltage of the be uh, beginning signal. Um, so, uh, they perform poorly under load because obviously caps can't deliver continuous power. So um, that's why uh, the, the, I put those caps there was to help them under load but also help to keep the voltage constant and smooth. Because like I said, any small voltage difference on the supply of the photomultiplier tube will cause it to um, change and uh, you know, the amplification will change and that will result in more or less cosmic rays per minute just because the supply changed. Obviously, I didn't eliminate this problem completely because if there was, say, a power surge on the line, uh, that would also cause it to um, spike. But I figured uh, my I have a whole house surge protector, so that should take care of it pretty well. Uh, should take care of it no problem. So um, that's that's it for the CW multiplier, basically. Like I said, I have about four um, mega ohms impedance across it, and that drops the voltage to about negative 900, uh, which is fine, but you just gotta keep that in mind, is that if you're building your supply, I built it to do negative 2300, and then tested it under load. Uh, the problem with measuring the voltage on these things is that they, um... okay, so the problem with measuring the voltage on a CW multiplier when the voltage is so high, is that uh, your standard multimeter has about 10 mega ohms uh, across. So uh, this is pr fairly standard, is that they put a 10 mega ohm resistor uh, between the positive and uh, negative leads on your multimeter. Now for a 5 volt supply, you know, even a 100 volt supply, uh, this is fine. Uh, and if this was a high voltage supply that could supply enough current, um, that's fine as well. Uh, however, since CW multiplier can supply such low current, um, 10 mega ohms will actually drop the voltage a fair bit. Um, n not to mention as well is that my multimeter can't handle voltages above 600 volts. So this, uh, obviously 2,300 and 900 are both well above 600 volts. Uh, although it can probably measure up to 1,000, it would just break. So uh, I'm not going to tempt fate with that one. So uh, the problem is that even if I could measure voltage that high, is that the 10 mega ohms would actually drop the voltage well below uh, what it normally would be. Because um, if 4 mega ohms can drop it, uh, you, know, uh, you know, by half, basically, 10 mega ohms would drop it by a quarter, and I'd be down to, like, 1,900 volts or something like that. What I did is I actually made a 90 mega ohm resistor just by sticking 3.3Ks uh, together to get 9.9K, and that, that rounds about 10... Um, plus, since they're 5% tolerant, you know, uh, it's only going to be... So, sent, because the resistors are 5% tolerant, even though my multimeter is less than 1%, I believe, um, the tolerance is going to be about 5% because of those resistors. And I wasn't, you know, I wasn't too concerned with a really accurate voltage reading. I just didn't want it to be, you know... 5% is totally fine for me. So, uh, what I did is I made a 90 mega ohm resistor, 
And if you put that in series with your multimeter, uh, your multimeter will actually just read a tenth of the voltage. So 6,000 volts is now 600 volts. So uh, this allows me to measure 2,300 volts as 230 volts, which my multimeter can easily handle, 230 volts DC. Uh, but it would work for AC as well. So uh, th that's um, how I actually measured the voltage. Um, and that I also use that to measure the 900 volts um, because 100 mega ohms is um, you know well above an order of magnitude uh, 4 mega ohms. So it shouldn't make much of a difference, you know. Maybe 25 volts difference. Um, the, the other good thing about having 100 mega ohms across is that when I put it across the divider uh, resistors for the photomultiplier tube, it, it shouldn't make a huge difference there. Um, so that's, that's the CW multiplier. That's actually how this photomultiplier tube is um, powered. But uh, 